as thou lovest me, let me see his letter. Good Master Fabian, grant me another request. Anything. Do not desire to see this letter. This is to give a dog and in recompense desire my dog again. Belonging to the Lady Olivia, friends. I fear we are some of her trappings. I know thee well. How dost thou, my good fellow? Truly, sir, the better for my foes and the worse for my friends. How just the contrary, the better for thy friends. No, sir, the worse. How can that be? Mary, sir, they praise me and make an ass of me. Now my foes tell me plainly that I am an ass, so that my foes, sir, I profit in the knowledge of myself, and by my friends I'm abused. <laughs> Why, this is excellent. By my troth, sir, no. Though it please you to be one of my friends? Thou shalt not be the worse for me, there's gold. But that it would be double dealing, sir, I would could make it another. Oh, you give me ill counsel. Put your pocket, uh, put your grace in your pocket, sir, for this once, and let your flesh and blood obey it. Well, I will be so much a sinner to be a double dealer. There's another. <clears throat> Primo, Sabino, Tertio is a good place. The old saying is a third pay for all. Uh, the triplex, sir, is a good tripping measure, or the bells of St. Bennet, sir, may put you in mind. One, two, three. You can fool no more out of me at this throw. If you will let your lady know I'm here to speak with her and bring her along with you, it may awake my bounty further. Oh, very, sir. A lullaby to your bounty till I come again. I go, sir, but I would not have you think that my desire is a sin of covetousness. But as you say, let your bounty take a nap. I will awaken it anon. Here comes the man, sir, that did rescue me. That face I do remember well. Yet, when I saw it last, it was smeared as black as Vulcan in the smoke of war. A bobbling vessel was he captain of, for shallow and draught and both unprizable. With which such scathful grapple did he make with the most noble bottom of our fleet? That very envy and the tongue of loss cried fame and honor on him. What's the matter? Orsino, this is that Antonio that took the phoenix and her fraught from candy, and he that did the tiger board where your young nephew Titus lost his leg. Here in the streets, desperate of shame and state, in private brabble did we apprehend him. Did me kindness, sir, drew on my side, but in conclusion put strange speech upon me. I know not what, t'was but distraction. Notable pirate, thou salt water thief, what foolish boldness brought thee to their mercies, whom now, in terms so bloody and so dear, hast made thine enemies? Orsino, noble sir, be pleased that I shake off these names you give me. Antonio never yet was a thief or pirate, though I confess on base and ground enough Orsino's enemy. A witchcraft! drew me hither that most ungrateful boy there by your side from the rude seas and rage and foamy mouth did i redeem a wreck past hope he was his life i gave him and did thereto add my love without retention or restraint all his in dedication for his sake did i expose myself pure for his love into the danger of this adverse town drew to defend him when he was the where, being apprehended, his false cunning, not meaning to partake with me in danger, taught him to face me out his acquaintance, denied me my own purse, which I recommended to his use not half an hour before. How can this be? When came he to this town? Today, my lord, and for three months before, no interim, not a minute's vacancy, both day and night did we keep company. Here comes the countess. Now heaven walks on earth. But for thee, fellow, fellow, thy words are madness. Three months this youth hath attended upon me. But more of that anon. Take him aside. What would my lord, but that he may not have? Wherein Olivia may seem serviceable. Cesario, you do not keep promise with me. Madam. Gracious Olivia, 
What do you say, Cesario? Oh, good my lord. My lord would speak. My duty hushes me. It be aught to the old tune, my lord. It is as fat and fulsome as howling after music. Still so cruel. Still so constant, lord. What, to perverseness? You uncivil lady to whose ingrate and unauspicious altars my soul, the faithfulest offerings hath breathed out that air devotion tendered. What shall I do? Even what it please, my lord, that shall become him. Why should I not, had I the heart to do it, kill what I love? A savage jealousy that sometimes savors nobly, but hear me this. Since you to non-regardance cast my faith, and that I partly know the instrument that screws me from thy, my true place in your favor, live you the marble-breasted tyrant still. But this your minion, whom I know you love, and whom, by heaven, I swear I tender dearly, him I will tear out of that cruel eye, where he sits crowned in his master's spite. Come, boy, with me. My thoughts are ripe in mischief. I'll sacrifice the lamb that I do love to spite the raven's heart within a dove. And I, most jocund, apt, and willingly to do you rest. A thousand deaths would die. Where goes Cesario? After him I love. More than these eyes, more than my life. More by all mores than e'er I shall love, wife. If I do feign, you witnesses above, Punish my life for tainting of my love. I am need to test it. How am I beguiled? Who does beguile you? Who does do you wrong? Hast thou forgot thyself? Is it so long? Call forth the Holy Father. Come away. Whither, my lord? Cesario, husband, stay. Husband? Yes, husband. Can he that deny? Her husband, Sirrah. No, my lord, not I. Alas, it is the baseness of thy fear that makes thee strangle thy propriety. Fear not, Cesario, take thy fortunes up. Be that thou knowest that thou art, and then thou art as great as thou fearst. Oh, welcome, father. Father, I charge thee by thy reverence here to unfold, though lately we intended to keep in darkness that occasion now reveals before tis ripe. But thou dost know hath newly passed between this youth and me. A, a contract of eternal bond of love, uh, uh, confirmed by the mutual joinder of your hand, attested by holy close of lips, uh, strengthened by interchangement of rings, and all the ceremony of this compact, sealed in my function with my testimony, since then, my watch hath told me, toward the grave, I have traveled but two hours. O oh, thou dissembling cub, what wilt thou be when that time hath sowed a grizzle on thy case? Or will not else thy craft so giddy grow that thine own trip shall be thine overthrow? My lord- Farewell and take her, but direct thy feet toward thou and I henceforth may never meet. My lord, I do protest. Oh, do not swear, oh, little faith, though thou hast too much fear. Oh, for the love of God, a surgeon, said one presently to Sartobi. Oh. What's the matter? Oh. oh, he has broke my head across and has given Sartobi a bloody coxcum too. Oh, for the love of God, draw help. Oh, I had rather than 40 pounds, I were at home. Oh. Who has done this, Sir Andrew? Oh, the Count's gentleman, one uh, Cesario. We took him for a coward, but he is the very devil incarnate. My gentleman, Cesario. Ah, his lifelings, here he is. You broke my head for nothing. And that that I did, I was set on to do by Sir Toby. Oh. Why do you speak to me? I never hurt you. You drew your sword upon me without cause, and I bespoke you fair and hurt you not. If a bloody cock's gonna be a hurt, you have hurt me. I think you said nothing by a bloody cock's comb. Oh, here comes Sir Toby halting. You shall hear more. But if he had not been in drink, he would have tickled you out of the gates, and he did. How now, gentlemen? How is with you? That's all, one. Yes, hurt me. 
And there's the end on it. Sot, dead sea, dick surgeon, sot. Oh, he struck. Sir Toby, an hour ago, and his eyes were set at eight in the morning. Then he's a rogue. I hate a drunken rogue. Away with him. Who hath made this havoc with them? I'll help you, Sir Toby. For, oh, for we'll be well dressed together. Will you help? An ass head and a coxcomb and a knave, a thin faced knave, a gull. Get him to bed and let his hurt be looked to.